गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स माय सेल्फ माय माय नेम इज सी एच वेंकटेश्वर राव असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग इन सेस इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सेस इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड इंजीनियरिंग ओके नाउ लाइक टू टेल अबाउट ए सब्जेक्ट इज कॉल्ड एज एन फाइनेट फाइनेट एलिमेंट मेथड्स ओके इट इज सिंपली कॉल्ड एज एन एम एफ एम ओके नाउ दिस सब्जेक्ट द नेचर ऑफ दिस सब्जेक्ट इज एन इज अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट सब्जेक्ट एंड इज हैविंग एन सिंपली सेट दैट इज ए कंप्लीटली प्रॉब्लमेटिक सब्जेक्ट completely na a problematic subject then uh, coming to the, this subject okay what is the need of this subject again what is the uh, uh, history or background of this subject is nothing but then uh, okay now the title finite element method okay finite means uh, okay we want to uh, analyze any engineering problem want to analyze any engineering problem okay in that engineering problem the uh, the entire object of the element the entire object and their object can be described discretized into the a number of elements that's why it is called an a finite element method that's why it is called an a finite element method okay uh, uh, finite element method and uh, coming to this uh, need of this subject uh, okay. for any engineering problem okay let us uh, consider any engineering uh, consider any engineering problem okay an engineering problem can be solved okay by using mainly an uh, these three types of methods mainly okay those uh, those methods are nothing but an first one is an experimental experimental method and second one is an uh, analytical method and third one is an uh, numerical numerical method okay then coming to the experimental method okay what are the problem we want to solve or what are the uh, analysis we have to done that can be done by an, an experimental procedure experimental procedure in this experimental procedure we have we are uh, consume a lot of time okay and money we are investing so much uh, so much amount of money and uh, material okay if in this experimental method our experimenter uh, our experiment results are not meet our uh, our requirement okay the entire that experiment will be lost okay in then coming to the analytical method okay and this analytical method is an analytical method and these uh, numerical methods are nothing but then uh, in this and uh, this engineering problem can be expressed in an uh, differential differential equations differential equation okay these differential equations are analyzed are solved by and these analytical methods that is an uh, analytical method as well as a numerical method okay in this these two methods okay the first method okay this uh, analytical method it is only used for an uh, simple problems okay they are mainly used for and simple problems and uh, with simple boundary conditions okay simple problems are simply boundary conditions we are using a uh, this analytical method okay then coming to the this numerical method and is a very powerful method okay in this method is mainly used for okay the object or an engineering problem having a complex nature 
are a complicated profile complex profile complex profile are an uh, difficult boundary conditions okay this is about an uh, uh, how we are uh, how we are using and these methods okay in this our finite delivery method is a uh, one of the method okay one of the technical one of the method in this numerical method that is a fm okay finite delivery method is the uh, one of the method in the uh, finite delivery methods okay then uh, okay that's why you can simply said that uh, okay you can simply said that a finite element method okay that is an fm okay finite element method it is an numerical technique for solving a for solving for solving an engineering problem for solving an engineering problem we are using and this uh, finite element method okay then uh, this is our uh, this uh, brief description uh, brief introduction about the uh, finite element methods okay in any engineering problem we are using and for uh, solving any problem in and this finite element method okay we have to follow a certain number of step are there is called as a sequential steps okay those sequential steps are mainly following in uh, the first one okay that means uh, sequential sequence of steps in fem for solving an engineering problem okay in that first step is an uh, discretization the first step is an discretization okay discretization means then uh, our entire domain okay what do you want to the solve the problem the entire domain can be discretized into an a number of parts a number of smaller parts okay we can discretize the entire element in very very smaller parts okay then the each part is called as an element is part of this domain is called an element okay and the second step is in the numbering of nodes and the elements okay in this uh, example okay the entire domain is described in a number of elements okay in this elements we have to give the numbering for the nodes as well as the elements okay the, these element this part is called an element okay this element we have to give the numbering for this connections to another element okay that's why you going to give the numbering and nodes for an each and every element okay after that you have to give the material properties or behavior parameters of a that uh, domain material pro, uh, the domain okay and next uh, fourth one is an uh, you have to derive an element stiffness matrix okay for each and every element in the uh, discretization process we have to derive number of elements okay for each and every element we have to derive an element stiffness matrix okay element uh, sorry
can derive an element stiffness matrix for each and every element in that domain okay after finding that element stiffness matrix we have to find we have to find the global stiffness matrix for the entire object okay that important we have to submit this element stiffness matrix okay we get then uh, the global stiffness matrix okay after finding the global stiffness matrix we have to apply the boundary boundary conditions boundary condition okay after applying the boundary condition we have to find the we have to uh, substitute all these element stiffness matrix and boundary conditions in a uh, finite element equation again okay, after solving we have to find the unknown parameters unknown parameters for this problem okay after that you have to find the and the related parameters the related parameters for this uh, for this problem okay that means uh, we have in this unknown parameters we have to uh, our main focus is then to find an uh, displacement in every problem on this uh, final element we have to find the displacement of a some particular point okay after that uh, we go for an uh, that uh, related parameters that uh, uh, for this uh, displacement what are the remaining parameters are which are related to this uh, displacement we have to find that those parameters those are nothing but an uh, insignificance that is stress and strain are induced stress and strains are induced in a body okay these are the main steps we are involved in the for solving a problem in a no, finite element method that is one of the numerical method one of the numerical method okay these are the main nine steps we are followed for any type of problem in that uh, finite element methods okay then you go for an no, okay before going to the uh, problems related to this finite element method we have to we have in some uh, some theory concept is there okay the nothing but and those basics are needed Okay, then coming to this uh, first concept uh, uh, the next concept in this topic is then uh, types of elements are generally used in uh, this finite element methods okay what are the different types of elements generally we are using in uh, this finite element methods okay the for uh, these are the okay so there are mainly three types of elements are generally used in this finite element method that is the nothing but and first one is an one dimensional nothing but an 1d elements one dimensional elements and second one is an two dimensional elements and third one is an three dimensional elements okay then what is one by an 1d element or then what is one by an 2d element and then what is one by an 3d element okay now again said the, an element is treated or an element is called an one dimensional element okay when you said that element is an one dimensional element that is uh, okay if the material properties of that element this material properties of that element okay and the geometric or geometry of the element k 
can be expressed can be expressed in only one spatial is only one spatial coordinate then we can set that element is called an a one dimensional element okay again you can see that uh, if an element is said to be one dimensional that is if the material properties and the geometry of the element can be expressed or can be described in only one spatial coordinate okay now spatial coordinates are, uh, uh, our spatial coordinates are in three coordinates x y and z direction okay in any object can be expressed on one spatial coordinate okay that can be treated as a one dimensional in okay in the same manner in the same manner if an element is said to be in two dimensional okay that means uh, if the material properties and geometry of the element can be expressed in in only in no, two spatial coordinates okay that means uh, in x and y okay it is only in an x for one dimension okay in the same way for the three dimensional okay in the same way the material properties and geometry uh, geometry of the element can be expressed in only three spatial coordinates that is what an x y z okay then you can say that uh, this is an, uh, a three dimensional entity okay this is a uh, brief discussion about an uh, what are the elements you are using and uh, this finite element methods okay then come into the some sub classification into this one dimensional two dimensional uh, three dimensional nothing but an uh, okay come into the one dimensional element okay in the coming to the one dimensional elements then coming to the one dimensional element we have a you are mainly considered in these three sub category uh, sub classification that is an uh, in a linear 1d element and uh, second one is an quadratic 1d element and c is an cubic 1d element okay these are the sub classification of and this one dimensional element okay when you uh, what is an uh, linear one dimensional element then what is an uh, quadratic element then what is an uh, cubic element okay in the one dimensional element the one dimensional element is only consists of two nodes a one dimensional element is uh, consists only two nodes then it is called an a, a linear one dimensional element okay and these are the examples for an uh, this two node element got an uh, a bar or a line element or a beam element okay and the schematic figure is an, uh, just like this okay an element uh, okay this is an uh, example for an uh, linear one dimension okay an element is consists of only two nodes at this ends then is called an a linear one dimensional element okay and then uh, these are the node numbers node 1 and node 2 and this is the representation of a node okay a number is is rounded then it is represented by an element okay for example this is a no uh, this is a one element no uh, element number one we can refer it as an one it is rounded okay this is the representation of an element in a no finite element method and without any uh, uh, rounds these are called as any node numbers okay they are called as any node numbers okay this is regarding about an uh, linear element then what about an uh, quadratic element 
okay quadratic element means there is a another node there is a another node within the two nodes in that uh, same element that is called as a quadratic element okay for example you can see this example okay this is a node number one and this is a node number two okay there is another node is in between these two nodes then you can say that this is an, uh, a quadratic element this is also called as a quadratic element okay then come into the cubic element okay there are uh, two nodes there are uh, in the same element okay in the same element it consists of a um, four nodes then it is called as an a cubic element okay there are the node one and two three and four okay this element is called an a cubic element okay and uh, and next uh, and a small part in this part uh, this uh, one linear or quadratic and cubic element is an uh, degrees of freedom d o f and degrees of freedom degrees of freedom in that the number of independent moments of a body in the space the number of independent movements of a body in the space okay for example you can take this uh, this object okay in this space they having an uh, six degrees of red okay the six degrees of red uh, there are three translatory motions and the three are rotational motions okay it can move in an x direction it can move in an y direction and it can moving in an z direction these are the three translatory motions of this object okay and having a three rotational motion that means it can rotate about an x-axis and it can rotate about an y-axis and it can rotate about an z-axis okay totally there are six degrees of freedom of an object in the space okay that the object is what that is a 2d ob uh, 3d object okay then coming to this one dimensional object okay uh, for one dimensional object the material properties and geometry of the body is expressed in an only one direction that means they having an only one degrees of freedom for an each node okay node one having an one degrees of freedom and node two having an one degrees of freedom okay totally for this linear one dimensional element having an no two degrees of freedom okay tof for this element is an no two then come into the quadratic one dimensional element okay that means this one Okay, they having an three nodes. Each node having an one degrees of freedom. There was the total degrees of freedom of this element is called as a three. And coming to the fourth, uh, this cubic element. Okay, this cubic element having an three nodes. Sorry, four nodes. And uh, the total degrees of freedom is an four. Okay, each node having an one degrees of freedom. That's why they having a totally four degrees of freedom okay this is about an uh, a one dimensional element on their subclassification that is a linear quadratic and cube okay linear means they having an only two nodes in the element and the same element having an uh, three nodes then it is called an a quadratic element in the same element having an four nodes then it is called an a cubic element okay this is the summary regarding to this uh, one dimension okay very simple terminology that is an uh, element is consists two only, only two elements that is a uh, linear one dimension element the same element having a uh, three nodes quadratic and four nodes they having a uh, cubic element okay there are the classification of an uh, uh, this uh, one dimension element, okay in the same manner in the same manner they having a uh, no two dimensional subclassification two dimensional element subclassification and a three dimensional element subclassification is there okay you can go for an uh, the subclassification of an two dimensional element the rest one is then no two dimensional element okay in this uh, the same manner you have an mainly linear two dimensional element linear two d element and quadratic two d element and next one is then cubic Element, okay 
linear quadratic in the pre in the same refer uh, in the with reference to the one dimensional element okay these are also treated as a uh, linear quadratic and cubic based upon the number of nodes in the element number of nodes in the element okay before going to this classification okay we have to see that what are the what are the generally used two dimensional elements in an uh, final element methods okay generally we are using and uh, mainly two types or uh, two uh, geometrical shapes in an uh, 2d fine uh, 2d elements okay those are nothing but an uh, triangular element and next one is an uh, quadri lateral element okay they are the generally used two dimensional elements one is a triangular element and second is a uh, quadrilateral element okay triangular element is an uh, just like this okay this is a geometry of a triangular element okay this triangular element is consists mainly and no uh, three nodes okay and this is called as an element this is a triangular element it consists of mainly and uh, three nodes okay and this is the geometrical shape of this triangular element okay then coming to the quadrilateral element okay this is just like this okay it is consists mainly two nodes sorry four nodes and this is an element okay they are the generally used two dimensional elements in a problem solution there is a uh, triangular element or quadrilateral element and that means our domain our uh, uh, domain it can be described as either triangular elements or in terms of an quadrilateral element. just like an uh, for example this is a simple domain okay now this domain can be described okay into number of parts okay that number of parts that smaller part may be this quadrilateral or it may be an a triangular element okay in this way you can discretize this uh, elements okay quadrilateral element okay these are the mainly used uh, two dimensional elements in our finite element methods okay then come into the in this sub classification what is a linear 2d element quadratic 2d element and uh, cubic 2d uh, element then you then uh, if this uh, 2d element okay on this edges having an another node okay this edges having an another node okay on it then it is called as in a quadratic element okay and this uh, along this linear edges okay there is another node at the middle of the element there is another node at the middle of the element along this uh, edge nodes okay then it is uh, called as an a cubic element okay this is the examples for an cubic element and these are examples for an uh, quadratic element okay and these are the uh, three different types of and 2d elements okay then come into the our 3d element and this classification is nothing but then uh, the number of nodes and their positions and next one is then uh, 3d elements okay at the starting of the types of element you can say that uh, an element is in 3d that means uh, their material properties and geometrical shape is represented in an three spatial coordinates then it is called an a 3d element okay or generally used 3d elements or generally used 3d elements in our final element methods is a nothing but an uh, one is an tetrahedron okay and next one is an uh, rectangular prism okay these are the mainly our base uh, used 3d elements in our final element methods okay in this sub uh, in this uh, in this case also they having a sub classification there is a uh, linear uh, 
linear next one is an quadratic and third one is an cube okay these are also nothing but an based upon the nodes in the elements based upon the nodes in the element okay the first one is an tetrahedron okay we can see the geometric shape of an tetrahedron is nothing but an uh, is just like this okay there are the four number of triangular faces around this body okay they are the called an tetrahedron okay this consists of mainly and no four nodes one two three and these are the fourth this is an example for an uh, tetrahedron okay in this uh, in this way you can describe an element okay then coming to the rectangular element Okay, they have consists mainly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, but uh, the regular three dimensional element consists of an tetrahedron, consists of an four nodes, and the regular rectangular prism consists of an uh, eight nodes. Okay, each node having an each node of this element consists of uh, having an uh, three degrees of freedom. Each node consists of n, 3 degrees of freedom. The totally 4 number of nodes are there. Each node having n, 3 degrees of freedom. The total degrees of freedom is n, 4 into 3, that is n, 12 DOF for this 3D entity. There are 12 degrees of freedom. Okay, for this comment, uh, for coming to this uh, rectangular prism, they having an 8 nodes, 8 into each node having n, 3 nodes, totally 24 DOF. There is a degrees of freedom for this cubic. Uh, this is a rectangular prism okay these are the types of elements you are generally used in an uh, our finite element methods okay next uh, click on it is second third or clear okay these are our uh, basic types of an uh, uh, elements in our final element methods okay and next uh, coming to the next concept next concept is in uh, shape functions shape uh, functions okay the uh, shape functions can be represented by an uh, a letter n okay then what is the use of and this shape functions okay let us consider an a one dimensional linear element one dimensional linear element having a nodes one and two and the element number one okay for this element i want to find the uh, for this element you have to apply some external load on it okay when you are applying external load on this body the body get deflected the body get deflected or our usual methods we have to find the displacement at node 1 as well as then node 2 yeah. in our regular practice we have to find the displacement at node 1 and node 2 we have to find the displacement within the element that means at any point in this element we have to find this for example this is a point p at this point i want to find the displacement at this location okay for getting these results for getting this displacement at this position we are using and these shape functions for getting and these shape functions that means shape function is that uh, these functions are used to find the displacement within the body by interpolating the displacement at these nodal points by interpolating the displacement at these nodal points okay now before going to before going to the shape functions uh, how to find the say functions we have to uh, know about and uh, the coordinate systems this one sir Before going to the shape functions derivation, we have to know about and uh, what are the 
coordinate systems are you are used in this uh, final element methods there is a first one is a uh, global coordinate system and second is a uh, local coordinate system and third one is in natural coordinate system okay there are the main mainly used coordinate systems we are using then uh, our finite element problems analysis okay first one is in global coordinate system means uh, for any element they having an uh, for example okay you have to there is a one uh, structure is is there okay this is called as a truss okay this uh, truss is having an uh, these are the elements bar elements okay one two three four and five there are the five nodes in this uh, structure element okay and the each node of this element each node of this element can be expressed from an origin okay the each node the location of the each node of this entire structure can be expressed from a common origin okay then this system is called as a global coordinate system okay then coming to the local coordinate system okay in this coordinate system each element having a separate coordinate system okay for this element we having an uh, element 1 5 sorry this nodes the element having a nodes 1 and 5 okay this element having an uh, own coordinate system that means uh, this node is an origin of the system okay and is an another node for example is an ith node and this one is a node number seven. J. slowly you can stop in 3 minutes already 37 minutes okay okay this is an uh, local coordinate system then coming to the natural coordinates is an uh, different coordinate system okay and recently you are not used in any uh, for the uh, before studies the newly introduced system okay in the in, in this system the origin of the system is taken at the middle of the element middle of the element and we are introducing an uh, the coordinate name is called as an a j z i okay that can be written as an in this way that can be written as an in this way okay the element having an uh, j is equal to minus 1 and j is equal to plus 1 okay and this one is the origin that is called as j is equal to plus 1 okay now the length of the element in the natural coordinate system is always 2 units the length of the element is always at 2 units okay uh, in the next in the next class we are discussing about and uh, the shape functions and their uh, derivations related to in uh, global coordinate system as well as a natural uh, natural coordinate system